Boruto episode 7, Love and Potato Chips. So as we get somewhat closer to, you know, the mystery behind Boruto's power, we have an episode that kind of focuses just really on like a kid who was in love and then he turned into a stalker. Well, he was a stalker and then he turned into an even crazier stalker because he ends up being controlled by, you know, whatever this dark power is. But I actually like this episode. I mostly liked it for the comedy element of it because it was definitely a comedy-based episode. There wasn't even a ton of action except for like really that ending piece where Boruto and Shika and I are like dodging all the kunai, which I thought was really funny where they go and they're basically getting a bunch of kunai thrown at them. They could die. And Sana's like, see, that's what happens when you run in without a plan. I was like, she's just like, this is not the time to be talking down to people and they're, they could possibly die. But that made me laugh really hard. But I like what they did with this episode with the kid like going crazy. It actually made for some pretty cool moments, honestly. Like they're He's splitting them up, you know, he brings down the gate, which was kind of shown off during the guys versus girls episode when they're trying to get to the top of the school. So, we see, you know, the shutters, you know, make a little bit of a comeback, which, it's weird that they have those, I feel, even though it's like a ninja school, I, for, you know, for defense, I would assume, but I feel like considering what we've seen in Naruto, if anyone's actually attacking the school, they'd be way stronger than, like, those little shutters. I feel like they'd be able to get through that. So I'm like, I don't really get who that helps if it's, like, if it's an actual adult, you know, attacking, I mean. But the guys get split up from the girls, so all the girls, including um, the girl that is actually being sought after, who it seemed like it was going to be Chocho, and they kind of made it seem like Chocho was the focus of this episode, and she really wasn't. It was more about... I feel like really it was more about the actual guy even than it was about the class rep who they actually say her name and it's Sumini which I was like finally because I could never they never say her name they always call it a class rep so he's actually chasing after her and Chocho is the one who's kind of giving the somewhat inspirational talks it was kind of weird because of course she's comparing the guy to like chips and stuff and how she went to get the crappy chips because they were you know standing up to the challenge even though it's just it's a bag of chips it was really odd you know <laughs> you know, a metaphor for how everything was playing out with this guy compared to these chips. But that was kind of her big thing is how she's talking. You know, in the beginning, she's talking about how she's, you know, losing weight and stuff like that. And she thinks that she's the one being chased after. And then they find out that it's Sumini. And even at the end of the episode, she's the one to give kind of the, the big hero speech to stop this guy. And she's actually able to uh, snap him out of it mentally, which... I thought it was cool. I was like, okay, that's cool. We haven't seen that uh, since, like, the first episode where even Boruto mentions, like, oh, yeah, that actually happened uh, with Denki, where he didn't have to get knocked out or beat up. He snapped out of it mentally because it's just, you know, it's one or the other. You either get knocked out or mentally you just realize it's okay to have this certain issue where you can find a way to get past it mentally. And so it, it gets rid of whatever the Dark War is. So... It was cool that they kind of brought back that idea, um, showing that, like, oh, yeah, that's what happened the very first time. It just kind of went away, and that was it. So I like that. Of course, the very end of the episode, I mentioned the same thing in my last review. I was happy that Naruto and Shikamaru were actually talking about this stuff, and it went, like, a, a tiny step further. Uh, it was just kind of the same thing at the end of this episode, where it's like, okay, they're reaching the same conclusions, um, basically, as their sons. I kind of like this little pairing. I know it's going to end soon. Or, well, maybe not soon, but it'll end once we get to the three-man teams. But I like what they're doing, where it's like Naruto and Shikamaru, and then Boruto and Shik and I, and those are like kind of our two little teams. So I kind of like that idea. But they're coming to the same conclusions, where it's like, okay, well, Chakra can either manifest itself as a legitimate monster, or something is attacking people's Chakra and basically controlling them, which seems to be the case. So... They're coming to the same conclusions, and Shikamaru has decided to, as a genius, he has multiple plans. So it's like, if it really is, you know, people's chakra being targeted, there's a plan for that now. So they have an investigation going. And I'm excited to see the results. Um, the big thing is that it's hard to say exactly how this is supposed to play out, because I don't know if they're going to give us the answer. Once again, I'm not caught up on the manga. I always read, like one chapter every once in a while so I'm still you know I still not caught up on the manga so I don't know if it's already been revealed exactly what the ability is but I'm like are they gonna do that in the show or are they gonna save it for you know where the manga is now I'm you know I'm just wondering how it's gonna play out or maybe they'll they'll just switch it and we'll be like okay well he had the power the whole time and we don't get to see it or, you know just little stuff like that because it just makes me wonder how things are gonna play out because going through uh, where I am in the manga, 
it's kind of the same thing as with the anime where it's like okay you have all these characters you even have this new ability but none of this stuff is showing up because in the first like five chapters or something like that of the manga or even more than that um it's all just Bo Ruto the movie so he doesn't have the power in that movie and in the manga they haven't changed that they haven't made it where it's made an appearance at all so far so I'm going to assume that if we're going to get this um get the answer to the ability it's either in the manga already and they're just going to switch where it shows up you know for the anime since it's you know, the anime or it hasn't shown up at all in the manga yet and you will have to get the answer from the anime so it's got to be like one of those two but they're getting a little bit closer to it um you know once again they have the ending with uh mitsuki where he's talking to the snake and it's like yeah he's the only one who can see it but they don't really understand why so that's interesting as well like even mitsuki i don't want to i mentioned before i don't want to spoil exactly who what's happening with him but if you watch naruto you know um but it's like okay this the, those characters have nothing to do with this ability and mitsuki can't see it at all either but he knows something is going on and maybe that's why he was kind of sent to the village in the first place. So, I don't know, it makes me wonder. It's like, you know, how much of that one shot with Mitsuki was about him finding Boruto and how much of it was him being sent in as kind of like a, a little savior or something like that. So, it made me wonder. Just some ideas in my head. But I did like this episode. I thought um, the part where they were in the school, I actually really did enjoy. Like, once it got to, like, the creepy thing there, um, and I, I love this part, but they, I guess the kids were doing art class and they were all had drawings of the bus of the former Hokage so I thought that was kind of cool but once it got from that scene to like the other stalky stuff that the kid was doing where he's drawn on the board and all the flyers are just falling down it's like I love you and you look great today and stuff like that I was like I like this the music is getting like kind of intense and it's really creepy I didn't think anything crazy was going to happen but it was still cool to watch because I'm like this is probably as dark as the show is going to get for a little bit and it was just like it wasn't like the ultimate villain thing either it was just creepy and I kind of like that element to it because it's like, okay, well, I know this isn't going to lead to somebody dying or anything dramatic, but it's creepy and it's kind of realistic when you think about it because a stalker can be in the real world. So it was like, I can kind of connect this to like real world elements where people are stalkers and it's just creepy. So I like the way they did that. And it's even creepier because this guy can be invisible and we see how that plays out. Like after the girls get split up from the guys, all the girls run to the ninja prep room and so the guy pushes the box down and all the smoke bombs go off and he locks Chocho and Sada in the room and he's like right behind uh, Sumini and stuff and like there's a part right before Denki shows up he grabs her arm while she's trying to like beat on the door and he grabs her arm and then Denki shows up and he knocked him right out it was really funny he was just like hey what's happening and then he gets like judo chopped and then he's out for the rest of the episode and I was like wow in and out that was his role in this episode but it was creepy and I was like I like this because he can be invisible but he's always like right there with them so I kind of like that element to it and it, it just made it you know an extra an extra little level of creepiness put on top of the already creepy stuff he was doing so I like the way it played out just because it was creepy and I could kind of relate to it um just because it's like a real world thing you can see that story anywhere and it's like yeah people stalk people in the real world this just happens to be a guy who can become invisible and um, is trying to kill people too because he was throwing those kunai like it was nobody's business he was ready to like take everybody out but I actually like that element too it wasn't really big outside of that this episode was definitely a contained sort of thing um, didn't even focus on Chocho as much as I thought it was going to and she seemed to be delusional even by the end um, and they even make fun of it where after she does like her grand speech and stuff it's like go out and you know become you know stand up to the challenge and become a more dependable and great guy and then come back to me and so I was like back to you like that doesn't make any sense so I love the way that they kind of did that where she was kind of ignoring the fact that she wasn't the center of his affection but she was kind of acting like she was the whole time and she was you know playing it off like when they first found out that he wasn't looking at her she's like oh you know I totally got him with my tactics and stuff so I like the way they utilized it for sure but I would love to have seen um a bit more action uh, honestly mostly from her because I thought I was going to focus on her so I kind of would have loved to have seen Chocho use her abilities and stuff like that. I think that just would have been cool just because we haven't really seen it. We Even with, you know, Choji from the original series, outside of the Great Ninja War and like that one arc, uh, the Sasuke Retrieval arc, we don't really get to see, you know, them use their powers. Like Shikamaru's thing, I can't count how many times I've freaking seen him use his power. And, you know, they use her power like way more in the beginning, but it makes sense because if she misses, she's like passed out. So it's like, 
yeah, you gotta watch it with that, that, that sort of technique. But for Choji and Chocho, I would love to see her use her power. She seems to have great control of it already because she's learning straight, you know, from the beginning. So it was cool the little bit that we did get to see, like when the girls first realized that they're being followed and they all get into like an attack stance. I thought that was just a cool moment in general, but. It was still a decent episode, definitely had some funny moments. I like the creepy sort of stalker element just because I thought, yeah, this isn't going to lead to anybody dying, but it's pretty intense and I like the way that it played out because, and like I said, probably because it could easily be realistic, they just added the, you know, kind of Naruto slash Boruto element to it with this guy having, you know, ninja ability. So I definitely like how they uh, did this episode. Looking forward to the next one for sure. Like in general, I'm looking forward to where we're headed. But I think the next one should be kind of a big episode as far as Boruto explaining his powers and stuff, even to Naruto, which I think is going to be pretty good. We might get some legitimate answers. Although it seems like, uh, based off of what I was reading when I was watching the promo, it seems like he thinks he has the Byakugan, and clearly that's not the case. So I'm very excited to see uh, what answers we are supposed to get from this next episode. And that's why I'm wondering, like, are they going to give us like full answers? Is the answer already in the manga and they're just doing it super, super early for the anime? Or, you know, how is any of this going to play out for the next episode? But certainly looking forward to it, getting some answers. And in general, we'll get to see Boruto and Naruto together, so that should be exciting because we really only see the same five characters. We don't even really get to see the parents too often outside of, like, small little clips. Like, Hinata hasn't been in, I think, the past three episodes, so she's going to show up again, which is nice. Same with Himawari because they're always together. So that's pretty good, and Naruto will actually be at the house instead of it's like a small shot at the end of the episode with you know Naruto and Shikamaru, you know, in the Hokage's office. So it'll be nice to see some of the adult characters, for one again, just in Hinata's case, but also in different locations in uh, Naruto's case. So looking forward to the next episode. But of course, we'd love to know what you guys thought about this episode. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts or these favorite parts, and I definitely want to know. Um, how long you guys think we're going to have to wait for some true answers as to what's going on with Boruto, who this, um, you know, unknown enemy is with the chakra and stuff like that. Those are like the two big questions. Um, as far as the eye thing, like I said, it's impossible for me to say because it could be in the manga already. They might decide to do it early. If it is in the manga, you know, would they do it this early in the series? I mean... It, there's just a lot of different questions to it, and if they if it's not in the manga, will they even give us the actual answer in the anime? So that's another big question. Like, will they give us that answer, even though it's not in the manga yet? So it you know it just makes me wonder how they're gonna kind of play things out. But we'll love to know your theories on you know who the villain might be. If you have any guesses, I mean, I would assume it's gonna be a brand new character and not someone that we know of. But if you have any theories at all, we'd love to hear them. And of course. We'd we'll love to know what you guys thought about this episode in general, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.